Howdy, AP Precal. It is Ms. Kosh. Um, today, I want to work through uh, Mr. Passwater's notes on 111. Um, I do part of this earlier in the year than he does, I think. Um, so the parts with the rational functions, I'm going to save that for later. I mean, I might make the video today, but not first. What we do at our school is we have, we have put long division with polynomials, and then we have put... Um, uh, oh, there's more. Okay. Um, and then we have put Pascal's triangle in our unit with polynomials. So let me start with, let me start with Pascal's triangle. I'll make this video for Pascal's triangle, and then I may go back and do the long division. Um, and the rational function stuff will come later. Okay. So Pascal's triangle basically allows us to do something like x plus 3 squared um, when it allows us to expand a bigger binomial. Well, hopefully you know that a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Um, if you don't know, hang on, I, this our new paper is too thin. I don't like it. Um, okay, a plus b squared. If you don't know that this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, get a Sharpie, or not a Sharpie. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. Your parents might be upset. Get a dry erase marker, write it on your bathroom mirror, and make sure you can erase it later. Don't use a Sharpie. Um, this should just be common knowledge. Okay, so if we see something like this, we would say x squared plus 2ab, um, and then get something like that. What gets more interesting, though, is when you start multiplying, we're raising it to a higher power. Okay, so x plus 3 cubed means that I'm going to take x plus 3 and multiply it by x plus 3 squared, which we just said was this. I don't really have enough space to show you how I would do the work. Well, okay, I do over here. I would say multiply x by everybody. I would get x cubed. I would get um, 6x squared. I would get 9x. And then when I multiply by 3, I'm going to line things up. 3x squared, this gives me 18x, and this gives me 27. And so I lined it up so I have my like terms in nice little columns. So I get x cubed plus 9x squared plus 27x plus 27. Okay, and this is x plus 3 cubed. But this is kind of annoying if we had to say, say I wanted to do x plus 3 to the 7th. Aye, 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 that would be a little tedious. Um, so we have a shortcut. Um, not a shortcut, but we have the binomial theorem that allows us to do this a little more easily. And so what happens is, um, I kind of like the way that I teach this. Anyway, um, you can go look at my video because um, I kind of lead you into this. But what happens is that each of each term has three components. Okay, each term has a coefficient out front that comes from Pascal's triangle. So um, I really do like how I teach this better. Okay, like if I had, if I have a plus b to the zero power, it gives us one. If I have a plus b to the first power, it gives us one a plus one b. Here are my coefficients. If I have a plus b to the second power, it gives me, like we said, um, a squared plus two ab plus b squared, but coefficients are one, two, one. If I then, if I take a plus b and I cube it, I now have coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. You can't tell that in the one that I worked up here um, because the 3 changes the reality of things. Um, but go, go find my video from my notes this year. Um, I think I, think I kind of introduced it a little bit better. But what's happening is there's several things happening. Um, every row of every term in Pascal's triangle can be described with what we call a combination. Um, and so the notation for a combination um, it can either be written as like NCR, or it's like a little matrix, N over R. There's, it's not a fraction. There's no line in there. Um, and the formula is N factorial over N minus R factorial R factorial. And if you're using the Casio like we are, um, what you'll have to do, oh, I just cleared the memory. Um, you come to the regular screen. If I hit option, then I can come over and probability, and then here is that NCR. And so... Um, Let's look at this bottom row of Pascal's triangle and compare it to with my calculator. This is the, okay, we start with the zero row, which corresponds to the fact that that's what we get when we raise it to the zero power. Um, the seventh row here, if I have seven, choose zero. This is saying how many ways can I pick none of those seven things? Well, there's one way, and here's that first term. So this is seven, choose zero. The second term is seven, choose one. But that's also equivalent, notice we have symmetry. It's also equivalent to 7 choose 6. 
Okay, um, but I'm gonna call this one seven choose one and this one the seven choose six um, for sake of consistency. They're the same. If you wanted to start with seven choose seven and then work your way down, that's fine. I'm just afraid that I will confuse you if I change up what I'm doing. Okay, um, the next one would be seven choose two. That's the third term. See how seven choose two corresponds gave me a value of 21, which is right here. Seven choose three gave me 35, and then likewise, seven choose four, seven choose. So each of these elements can be described and can be found with a combination. So you can use the formula. Um, okay, we'll do a seven choose, we'll do seven choose three, because we hadn't done that. Okay, so that's seven factorial over seven minus three factorial, three factorial. What this means is this is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, but I'm gonna stop at four factorial and you'll see why. This is four factorial over three times two times one. That's the three factorial. Four factorial here and, and there divide out to give us one. Um, three times two is six, that's gone. Um, seven times five is equal to 35. And that was, this is that term that I was looking for. Okay, and that's how all of this works. So back to expanding a binomial. If I have an a plus b to the nth power, at every term, it's by the way, if I have, if I raise it to the nth power, um, I'm going to have n plus 1 terms, okay? If I raise it to the second power, think, um, like if I have a plus b to the 0 power, I had one term. a plus b to the 1 power, I have two terms. a plus b squared, I end up with three terms. If I cube it, I get four terms. Okay, so if I'm raising it to the nth power, I have n plus 1 terms. Um, they all have a coefficient out front that can be expressed with a combination, okay? These also, they come from... Um, it comes from Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle can be described with combinations. Um, and then, so the way that I liked, and then they have an A term and a B term. And the exponent on A starts at N and works its way down. So N minus one, N minus two, all the way, and then it gets to one, and then this would be, I like to even just write A to the zero power so that I can put A on every term. And then B right here starts with B to the zero. Um, he didn't add that in, but I mean, he's not wrong. It's just, I like to include it there so you see, um, that I've got b in every term and it starts at zero and works its way up to n. Okay, um, so let's see. Um, what does he have here? In Pascal's triangle, the fifth row is circled. In the fifth row, the first number 10 has been circled. The circle 10 is the second element. Whoa, row five and... I would call that the third element. Okay. Um, Yeah, I don't call that the third ter second term. I think I would call that the third term. So I don't know if that's a typo or if he's thinking differently than I am. But um, okay, so here, let's go ahead and, and try one of these problems. Um, it's not a bad idea to go watch how I teach it off of my notes. So this is raised to the fifth power. So we're gonna use this row that has um, the fifth row that has a five in it. Um, and so I like to do one plus five plus 10 plus 10, I'm gonna write, write too big, plus five, plus one, oh dear, I wrote too big. Okay, um, or I spaced things out too much. So then my A value, I'm gonna put an A value with everybody. You know, I should've used color. I use color in class. Um, and then the exponent goes five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, and then I'm gonna have, um, I, I usually have three different colors happening here, um, but I'm too lazy to go find another color and I already started. This is 2 to the 4th. Okay, so did you notice I was inconsistent in how I did this? This has an exponent of 5. Um, the first time I just wrote all my x's and then did my exponents, and the second time I was too lazy to come back to it, but whatever. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so this gives me x to the 5th. Now I have a 2 times 5 is 10, x to the 4th. This is 4 times 10 is 40, x to the 3rd. This is 8 times 10 is 80 x squared. 2 to the 4th is 4 squared to 16. 16 times 5, uh, 80. So 16 times 5, 6 times 5 is 30. 10 times 5 is 50. 50 plus 30 is 80 is how I got there, in case you're curious. Um, and then 2 to the 5th. Okay, I always count on my fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And there's no x's because it was to the 0 power and that has been expanded. So that's the answer we'd be looking for. This type of problem, I think you should be able to do without a calculator. So you'll notice my calculator is right here, right off the screen, but I didn't use it. Okay, 
to, um, use Pascal's triangle to expand this one. Okay, same idea. So it's one. Well, it's not the same. Not quite the same because we're raising it to the fourth power. I tried to give myself more space. Um, the fourth row, the more you practice, the more you'll start to just say, oh, it's one, four, six, four, one. Right here, one, four, six, four, one. Um, did I talk about how we generate these? These two numbers add together to give me that two. These two add to give me three. These two add to give me three. And we always have ones on the outside. So like my next row would be one. These add to give me eight. These add to give me 28. This becomes what, 56. This becomes 70. This becomes another 56. This becomes another 28. Here's an eight and a one. Isn't that fun? It's so fun. I once had a kid do like 20 rows of Pascal's triangle on my board and it looked beautiful for a few days and then we erased it. <laughs> and there goes all his hard work. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, back to the problem. I have two to the X that needs to show up on every term. Okay, and their exponent starts at the top, four, and works its way down. Okay, and then I have cape this sign, whatever it is, in parentheses, and then it'll take care of the plus and minuses. Um, once again, I'm like, I wrote it all the way out. There we go. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, um, so now I have two to the fourth power is 16, x to the fourth. Two to the third is eight times um, four is 32. This is x cubed. Oh, guess what I forgot? I forgot the negative. Make that a negative. There we go. My bad. Okay, this becomes a positive when I square it. And so, and then this is 4 times 6 is 24x squared. Okay, this is a negative, And then um, 4 times 2 is 8. So a negative 8x. And then I have a positive 1. And there we go. Okay, so now we can look at, the, this is another one I think you could be able to, you should be able to do that without your calculator. Um, the coefficient term with x to the fourth. Okay, so we have, we have a, a combination, we have x raised to a power, and we have 5 raised to a power. This one I think they would let you have a calculator. Um, what happens is we want this to be a 4 because we need it to be x to the fourth. These two always add up to this number here. So I don't know if you noticed, 4 and 0, 3 and 1, 2 and 2, 1 and 3, 0 and 4. That was a little fast, but they all add up to 4. Same idea over here, 5 and 0, 4 and 1, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 4, 5 and 0, or 0 and 5. Those all add up to 5. So these, you always add up to um, whatever you were being raised to. Um, and then the way that I have, because I always start with whatever, choose 0, choose 1, choose 2, and work that way, then what happens is that becomes the exponent on the B part. So it's 6, choose 2. But the good news is if you get that wrong, well, okay, hang on, let me clear out all that. Delete, go away. Okay, option, come back in here to probability. There it is. I want 6, choose 2. It is equal to 6, choose 4. Um, those are both 15, but be careful... 5 to the 2nd is not the same as 5 to the 4th. So this would be, usually I write it underneath, but I didn't have enough space. Um, x to the 4th, and then 5 squared is 25. What is 25 times um, 15? Well, 25 times 6 would be 400, so 375. Ah, okay. Sometimes I just like to know that I still remember my math. <laughs> okay. Um, super. Um, let's look at this last one. These are, I think they're fun. Um, this is 8 to something, and then I have an x to a power and a negative 3 to a power. They want x cubed, if you can read that. This is a 3, so this is a 5, so this is a 5. And so now I'm going to do 8 choose 5. That's 56 times x cubed. Um, 3 to the 5th, is that... Oh, sorry. 243? It is. Okay, but this is a negative, so this becomes a negative 243 that needs to get multiplied by 56. I lost my negative. Uh, 13608, can you see what I'm doing? So this would be a negative 13608x cubed. So the question says, what is the coefficient? Oh, by the way, this is not a true statement. Did you catch that? This should be x to the fourth, but the answer to the question, what is the coefficient, is 375. What is the coefficient? Negative 13608. I think they're fun. I also have a challenge where it's like, um, I give you a problem where I have something like x squared minus one over x and I raise it to some power, I don't know, the eighth power, and then I say find the constant. Um, but that's a whole another set of videos. Um, go look for my binomial expansion 
extension or go look in my IB stuff because IB does some crazy things with bi binomial um, expansion. So um, like, subscribe, comment, and then go practice. The only way to learn math is to do it. Good luck.